Anyway, so I just wanted to dive a little bit into shame because it's one of those emotions that people don't like to talk about. We really shame averse. And as I was speaking to my client about, you know, what are the causes of her shame and why she doesn't want to show up, I I shared with her something from, sorry, I have to share this again, Atlas of the Heart. And in, in Atlas of the Heart, Brene Brown talks about how those of us that have a capacity to feel shame obviously also have a capacity for empathy. And so how we build shame resilience, and I did an episode about this, how to build shame resilience, we have to start practicing self-compassion, right? And we have to understand that our ego has to die at some point in order for us to like access the highest version of ourselves, like find us and find what we are worthy of. I just want to ask you before digging a little deeper in this topic, why are you avoiding failure? And I just want you to think about that, right? Why are you avoiding failure? And why are you avoiding the idea that you may not have met your own expectations that you yourself set? Why are you uncomfortable with that? What if you became comfortable with the fact that you created the expectations, you define the expectation, and you not meeting them doesn't mean anything about you as a person, right? So what is the first part of dealing with failure? The first part is really dealing with the fear, right? How can you stop letting the fear of failure stop you? The first thing is take action and do it afraid. What is the meaning of when you take action and do things afraid and fail forward? One, you prove to yourself that the feeling of fear is irrational. Like, I want you to go through and think about, like, worst case scenario of, like, conquering something that you've been trying to do. Think about it. And and then ask yourself, like, why is failure a good thing? And I know I've shared this example in the past. And I always think about my own daughter and many children, all children, basically, learning how to walk. My daughter was a late walker. I still have a video of my daughter, like, really, really, really trying to walk and falling and then getting up again and falling. This is like the epitome of who we are as humans. Like we are made of resilience and determination, right? And one thing about like the whole situation with my daughter learning how to walk, she never like decided, you know what, this walking thing is too difficult. I'm just going to crawl for the rest of my life. She got up, she walked, and she kept going. How can we embrace that and just say, you know what, I get up, I try to walk, but tomorrow I will walk one step, right? And I still remember vividly the video and I have it on my phone and I don't think I will ever like remove it from my phone because it it's such a good lesson for me. The day my daughter took her first steps and I wasn't home for it and I'm actually not guilty about it. I was out making a living <laughs> to put food on the table for all of us. But my nanny sent me this video and she's cheering her on and she's telling her in Spanish, like, good job, good job. And my daughter like makes those steps, but she doesn't even make a big deal out of the fact that she just made like three, four steps. Right. And so when I think of failure, I think of the fact that being okay with failure actually gives us confidence. It gives us confidence to take massive action. And like I said last week on the episode, massive action is taking action until you get the result that you want. We get to know what fear feels like. When you think about the primal brain and what it it was functioned to do with the motivational triad, right? Avoid pain, seek comfort, and conserve energy. We didn't want to know what pain felt like. We didn't want to know what fear felt like. But one thing about actually going through it and feeling it is then you're like, oh, now I know what it feels like. I was thinking about in 2020, my husband had a health scare. It was a health scare that he has had all his life. He has always been afraid of having cancer because he lost his grandfather to cancer. And it's always been a fear that just like it was keeping him up awake at night. My poor husband was supposed to get a procedure done. And like to the weeks leading up to it, he was sleep talking and thrashing in the middle of the night. And he finally told me, he's like, I'm so terrified. They're going to go in there to do this endoscopy and they're going to find out I have cancer. 
for us, it was just like a routine check. And then they did find something. And thank God it was not cancer. But the, the period of waiting and doing biopsies and waiting. And my husband looked at me one day and he said, you know what's so crazy is I've always felt the fear of having cancer. And now I know what it feels like to actually think you have cancer. And he goes, and I'm so grateful for that feeling. Because then it was like, he kind of got it out of his system. He's like, okay, now, God forbid I ever get diagnosed with cancer. Like, I know I'm not going to get the news and just like stop, stop existing, right? And so when you think about fear in that way, like, why not feel it and get comfortable with it so you know what it feels like? The other question I want to ask you is, what is your failure tolerance, right? Because your failure tolerance is inversely related to your fear of failure. The more intolerant you are of failure, the higher your fear of failure is. The more tolerant you are towards failing, the less your fear of failing. Because you're like, okay, I can do the thing, I can fail, and that's okay. The more tolerant you are towards failing, the more you are likely to take massive action and the more likely you are to keep going forward even when you're not really, you know, meeting those expectations, but you know it's like right around the corner and you're going to get to it. If you have a low failure tolerance, you're most likely avoiding taking action. The problem with this is then you don't make any forward momentum. You're just like so terrified of taking action. You've decided this is status quo. And sometimes you're, you know, you're just, you're just being careful and you're just, it can come up in such sneaky ways where you actually start to procrastinate or overanalyze. And in your mind, you're like, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm processing, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm thinking about it, right? Whatever goal you have for 2022, what would be the worst case scenario if you allowed yourself to fail, right? The worst case scenario would be, yeah, you may not meet the expectations you set for yourself, but then you would grow so much as an individual and as a mom and, you know, as a worker, because you would be like, okay, I may not have met the goal, but like I showed up for myself and did this like incredible and difficult thing. You know, Mark Brackett says in Permission to Feel, he says strong negative emotions such as fear, anger, anxiety, hopelessness, tend to narrow our minds. It's as though our peripheral vision has been cut off because we're so focused on the peril that's front and center. There is actually a physiological side to this phenomenon. When these negative feelings are present, our brains respond by secreting cortisol, the stress hormone. This inhibits the prefrontal cortex from effectively processing information. So even at a neurocognitive level, our ability to focus and learning is impaired. So the more we have this fear of failure, the less we can activate our prefrontal cortex, the less we can take risk, the less we can like make decisions that are not ego driven because we are not functioning at our highest prefrontal cortex mode. Like we're trying to like really hide from ourselves and, and really pretend that like we are what we're not and we're not really living as our best self. I'm Shira Burke Bauer, and you're listening to an excerpt from the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. You can listen to the whole episode wherever you get your podcasts and look out for new episodes out every Monday. You're doing a great job, Mama. I'll see you next week. Bye now. <laughs>